look forward to listening to you. Lord, we are yearning to suck from your breast. Lord, to drink from the scriptures this afternoon. Lord, I ask that you give me the grace to speak with ease. Give the listeners the grace to hear with ease. Your words are already anointed. But the little I'm going to add, I ask that you anoint them. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me speak with simplicity. Let me speak with accuracy. And let your people, God, be lifted. Let the enemy be stupefied. Let the people of God be glorified. And let your name be edified. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God has something to say. God has something to say. I will listen. Pay full attention. God has something to say. Hallelujah. God has something to say. God has something to say. I will listen. Pay full attention. God has something to say. Speaking to us this afternoon on a topic the Holy Spirit calls Solution Provider. And I pray that that solution provider is coming your way this afternoon. Amen. Matthew 14, verses 14 to 16. Matthew 14, 14 to 16. Matthew 14, 14 to 16. Bible says, And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion, and healed their sickness. When it was evening, the disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place. And the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. For those of you joining us for the first time, we always reserve the word, the Bible confession and the word for the last on the agenda so that as soon as we finish that nothing comes on it we just go home with the word of god if you have observed through the scriptures you will see that it's not in the nature of god to shack responsibility god does not run away from his responsibility at any level no matter how high no matter how daunting or no matter how challenging he created the whole world and adam and eve messed it up he did not delegate that job to anyone. He rolled up his sleeves again and he called on Jesus and said, They have messed up the work I did. You go and tidy it up. Adam was created on the sixth day because God does not need anybody to do his work for him. So by the time Adam came into the equation on the sixth day, the earth was already existing, the moon was already there. The sun, the stars, the fishes, the great oceans were already there. He has done his job. He just created Adam on the sixth day just to come into rest. So Adam will not be able to say, God, I partnered with you to create the fishes. I partnered with you to create the sun. No, he has done everything. He just created Adam to just go and rest. So God does not run away from his responsibility. And we see the same thing in the life of Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus did not come mainly because of miracles or healings or signs <coughs> and wonders. If that is the reason why Jesus came, then we don't need him. Because if we look at the Old Testament, we already have abundance of people working miracles, creating signs and wonders. We don't need the New Testament. So he actually came for one reason, which is to seek and to save the lost. And he did not run away from that responsibility, even up to the cross when he hung there dying. You will see that because the thief on the cross, whether on the right or the left, the Bible did not tell us, they were suffering the same pain, they were enduring the same challenge, and his mind was still saying, how am I going to save this man? And they are still, they are, they are still on the cross and they are suffering the same fate. So the, the responsibility that he had, he did it, he carried, he committed to it to the point of death. He never at any point took any step backward. In football, I love football. 
If you are a midfielder and you are playing in a, in a football team, they expect you to get the ball and pass it forward. If you are a midfielder and you pass your ball sideways or you pass your ball backwards, you, you, it's a question of time, they will put you on the bench because you have to move forward at all times. And that is what the Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms chapter 84, verse uh, 7. It says, and they move from strength to strength, every one of them appearing in Zion before God. So God does not run away from his responsibility. Isaac's well was filled up many times, but he kept on finding another well within himself until he got to the seventh one, which he called Rehoboth. And you can see that in Genesis chapter 26, verse 22. Genesis 26, 22. Genesis 26, 22. In other words, stand your ground against whatever difficult situation you find yourself because the word of God says, occupy till I come. He didn't say occupy for months. He didn't say occupy for years. If I'm not going to come back in the next 50 years, I, Jesus, accept you to, I mean, I expect you to occupy till I come. The lion is the strongest of every beast, and he will never turn away from anyone. See that in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 30, Proverbs 30, verse 30, Proverbs 30, verse 30. And that's what made the whole difference between Judas and Peter. Peter had a setback. As a matter of fact, he denied Jesus three times. What Peter did was more grievous than what Jesus won, than what Judas did. <laughs> Judas denied him once, Peter denied him three times. But the difference between Peter and Judas was that Peter understood the fact that you can't go back. You can't put your hand on the plow and look back. The Bible says if you are that candidate, then you are not fit for the kingdom of God. So what did Peter do? Peter realized his weakness and he went back to Jesus and asked for forgiveness. That was what made the difference between Peter and Judas. Judas did not apologize. He doesn't need to do what he did. So he went to hang himself because he does not understand that you can't, you can't take your hands away from the plow when God has handed you an assignment. When God has handed you an assignment. I'm yet to see any boxer in any boxing ring that maybe at some point, it's not been knocked out, maybe after round one or two or three, and then they call them to come back to continue, and he just turned his back on the opponent and walked away and come out of the ring and goes into the dressing room. I'm here to see any boxer like that because it's a challenge, it's a battle, you just have to keep facing it. If he does that, the fine will be very, very heavy on him by the time the regulators come upon him. Why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this because if you go to the scripture that we read, Bible says, Jesus went out and he saw a great multitude. He was moved with compassion and he healed their sick. So he attended to their health needs. But at some point, evening came and they became tired. They became hungry. Now, left to the disciples, as far as they are concerned, they have got the healing that they wanted. Jesus has spoken to them. They have gotten the anointing. They are hungry. That's their own business then they should find a way to go and satisfy their hunger. So they advised that they go to another city or the city next to them where they can find some abundance of food and then their hunger would be satisfied. But what they failed to realize was that the solution provider was just next to them, which is Jesus Christ that rose. What they lacked was courage and motivation. And if you read the book of Joshua, especially Joshua chapter 1, in not less than three to four different verses, you see the Spirit of God telling Joshua to be strong and to be courageous. To be strong and to be courageous. So if you are strong and you are courageous, what you are demonstrating is that you are forward-looking. What you are demonstrating is that there's no room to go back. You have burned the bridge during the civil war in, in, in where I come from originally. Understand there was a commander, one of the commanders of the of the one of the one of the sites that were locked in conflict. This man leads from the back and he has his gun in his hands. He asked the, the people who are fighting the, the rank and file to go in front. If anyone steps back from the back, he shoots the person because they believe that you are not fit to enlist in the army. Now that is just the army of men. How much more the army of the Lord? So we see courage and motivation standing beside them, but they didn't know what to do with it. And if you read the last verse of that chapter 1 of the book of Joshua, you will see that even the people, 
that he was supposed to lead into the promised land. Don't forget, Moses was on that journey for 40 years. They couldn't get into the promised land. And as a matter of fact, they got into that promised land. Even in the days of Moses. Because if you read that account in Numbers chapter 16, Bible says, and they got to a place called... Uh, 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 it's not Kiriatari. They got to a place called Kadesh Barnea. They got to Kadesh Barnea, Bible says, and... Miriam died there and he was buried. If you look at the map of Palestine, Kadesh Barnea is actually in Canaan. So they moved, they got there, but they turned around again. And that's why it costed them 40 years. But when a man of courage, a man of vision, a man that does not take for an answer, posted on the scene, he said, Send words to all the 12 tribes and tell them that in three days we will cross this Jordan and we'll get into the promised land. And that was exactly what happened to them. So the solution was beside them, but because their courage failed them. You have to be not only the man outside, you have to be man inside. I think we mentioned that about two weeks ago, that Jesus is called a combination of the lion and the lamb. The lion is inside, the lamb is outside. You are gentle with people, but inside you are so determined, inside you are so convinced, inside you are so rock solid that nothing, nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing that can take you out of your inheritance. So that is what courage and motivation does to people. And the only faith that will win, the only faith that will win is a violent faith. I said it, I think, two weeks ago. You have to add a little bit of madness to your Christianity. You have to add a little bit of madness to your Christianity to be able to crack this thing called heaven. If it's not there, average, average is evil. Mediocrity is evil. And that is why the Bible says in the book of Revelation that it's better for you to be cold or to be hot. If you are in between, he said, my soul has no delight in you. And what is the consequence of that? He said, I will spew you out of my mouth. The Lord will not spew you out of his mouth in the name of Jesus. Amen. The only faith that will win is a violent one. It's an unyielding one, an unbending one, an unmoving one, an unrelenting one. They will be a faith that looks at situations and say, if I perish, I perish. People have said it in the Bible. And that is the point you get to. Esther said it. That's the point you get to, that you don't perish. Hallelujah. So God wants us to be at that breaking point so that he can demonstrate his love for us and increase us in faith. Going back to our scriptures. Now, those people, they didn't know what to do with the 5,000 people there. I mean the apostles. They didn't know what to do. They thought the only way out for them is to send them to the next city so that they can go and buy whatever they want to eat. But Jesus was not a demotivated person like them. Jesus was highly motivated. He knew why he came. He knew what his assignment was about. He understood that souls are perishing. He understood that there's a generation that needs to learn something better than the Old Testament. And he gave himself all through, thoroughly, through and through. For his soul. Let's see how he handled the situation. Let's see how he confronted the giant that was before him. The first giant that was before Jesus in that equation were the multitudes. So, the people he was about to feed was not the size of this church, just 100. No. The people he was about to feed were 5,000 men. And if it were to be these days when women are more than men in the church, then there are probably 10,000 women there. And then children. All of them have to be fed. Now, what does he have in his hands? He has just five loaves of bread and two fishes. Now, I don't know about you, but in my life, I have never seen a loaf of bread that is bigger than this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you have seen something bigger than this. And it doesn't matter whether it's sliced or whether it's full, whether it's agege bread, whatever it is, there's none that I have seen that is bigger than this. Now, let's say 5,000 people want to eat this. So we fold it, that's for two people. Then we go again. Probably that's for four people. Then we go again. Maybe that's for eight people. We go again, maybe 16, 32, 64, 128. We keep going. At some point, what we'll be left with will not be more than this. And we have not even reached 200. And we want to feed 5,000 people. Now, how will that happen? Can a demotivated person 
find himself in that situation and still have the God or the courage or the heart or the soul to continue in that situation, it will never happen. So, but he, he looked at it differently. So, we are talking about multitudes. Some of them might even have allergies. How is he going to solve that? Some of them might, I mean, some of them, the food might be cold. Some of them might not like cold food. These are problems that was before him. Now, we have not even talked about the water they are going to drink after the food. We have not talked about the safety of 5,000 people trampling over each other. We are not even talking about whether they have a budget for that. What of the mess that would be, you know, the consequence of the food given to many people in an open place? Who is going to clear them? So who will serve that food? So these are the issues that were before Jesus because the multitude were confronting him. The second challenge they had before him, the Bible says it was in the evening. He said it was in the evening time. So what about the issue of visibility? What about the people of identity or people queuing up for food twice because it was evening? What about families losing each other because it's such a crowd? So who is going to translate? Who is going to, what's going to happen to the fish after two, three days? Because I don't know, we are, we are not told how many days it took Jesus to feed them, but we are not told the condition. We don't even know the expiry date of that food that he had in his hand. So we might say five loaves of bread, two of them might have actually gone past, past the expiry date. So he's left with a limited number of items to work with. What about babies, children? What about animals? You know, there could be nocturnal animals. There are most of the animals in the Palestine area. They are night animals. The birds there, most of them are birds of prey. So with these are issues that was before Jesus. The third issue before him was that they were in a desert place. They were in a desert place. We have not talked about water. We have not spoken about their heat. What about their movement being impaired because it's a sandy soil? What about the winds that will blow the loose sand into the eyes of the people? No tent to hide. What if the rain comes? Now, there are lots of what ifs that could come into that equation. But Jesus overruled all of that because, as we sing, Master of the universe, conqueror of all. He is the master of the universe. And if we are his children, he expects us to think the way he thinks. So naturally, the solution that the apostles offered should have been the best. Let them go to the next city and find food to eat. But the rabbi had a different way of handling his own things. I remember the Jew told us a story. He said, if you are confronted with a mountain, there are many ways by which you can deal with it. You can choose to turn back, which will be very disastrous. You can, use, you can choose to climb over it. You can choose to go around it. And he said, if you choose to go around it, the, the base, the bottom of a mountain is usually larger than the tip. So you have to do a very long way before you get to where you are going. You may choose to drill it. You may choose to climb. But the best is to speak to it. That's why the Bible says, if you will say to this mountain, if you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, without any doubt in your heart, he said, exactly that is the result that you are going to see. Everything that God made has ears. We might not be able to see them. The tangibility of their ears might not be visible, but the truth is that they see. Because the Bible says, if you will speak to this mountain. Look at the story of Jonah. God gave Jonah the, the order to go and do this in Tarshish. The Bible says he went down to Joppa, and he got a ship that was going to the direct opposite of where he should go, which was Tarshish. But as God was speaking to Jonah, the fish has already had. And that's why when it was the turn to, of the fish to play its own role, he swallowed up Jonah. The wind has already had. That's why when it was the turn of the wind, the wind rose up against the boat, and the problem began to happen to them. Even the people who were sharing the same ship with him, the Bible said they had to throw all the cargo overboard because the man was there. So everything has had. But it was just them that they didn't know what to do. So he knew the most effective way by which he could deal with the situation. And the first thing he did was this, if you want to write. Number one, he overruled the faithlessness of the disciples. He overruled their faithlessness. And how did he overrule? He said, no, don't worry, they don't need to go away. They don't need to go away. We have the weapons, we have the authority, we have everything, the power to be able to help them. If we can heal their sick, what is food? What is food? So he, he took them down and he overruled their faith because their faith was not strong. 
enough. Sometimes you need to overrule your faith so that the whole family can get to where you need to be, get to where you need to, to be. I can cite an example there. There was a time when, when, and I've cited that example many times, there was a time when I, I, I found it very difficult to drive. Very difficult to drive here. Yeah, I've been driving, you know, before, but I found it difficult to drive here. Yeah. And I had to go back to God and say, God, I can't, I have children that I need to take around, I have family that I need to take around. Oh, how am I going to do this? By the end of the day, put my trust in God. I didn't look at the bigness of the situation, went into fasting and prayer, and the rest is history. Now, I understand that there is no way you put anything before God, even if you do it, I mean, if you do it in faith, that God will not respond, that God will not respond to what you are asking from him. The second thing that Jesus did was that he instilled faith in them. He instilled faith in them. How did he do that? He said, you give them something to eat. When they say we have only five minutes, he said, you give them something to eat. So he pointed at them and he said, you give them something to eat. So the village is not meant to give them what to eat. You have what it takes to give them what to eat, and that is what you need to do. Speak the word, and you will see the manifestation. Because of our time, the third one, the third thing Jesus did was that he reminded them of their mustard seed. He reminded the apostles of their mustard seed. What was their mustard seed? It was the bread and the two fishes that was in their hands. So they had the solution in their pocket. They had the solution in their hands, but they did not do anything about it. They did not do anything about it. So when he gave them that bread, they did three things. Jesus Christ blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. He understood the rules of multiplication. When you bless something, it's likely, it's likely, 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 likely to multiply. That's why Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, Genesis 1 28, Genesis 1 28 said, God blessed mankind and said, be fruitful, multiply. And the blessing comes first before the multiplication. He broke it. When he broke it, what does that mean? He broke every limit on that five loaves of bread and two fishes. And the law of multiplication took effect, then he gave it. Of course, you know you can't get it if you don't give. And that's a central principle that uh, everybody knows. So he gave them the bread, and as a result of that, they were able to gain more. Look at baby Samuel. Baby Samuel was given to God, but his mother got prophet Samuel back. Baby Samuel was given to God, but his mother got prophet Samuel back. Shepherd Moses went to the backside, but leader Moses came back to deliver his people. So what you give is what you get garbage in and garbage out. Hallelujah. Let's rise to our feet this afternoon as we begin to pray. And our prayer is this. Lord, let me see the way you see. That was the, what made the difference between Jesus and the apostles. Let me see the way you see. You see the end from the beginning. You use the eye of an overcomer. You engage the skills of one who knows what the end will be, even from the beginning. If we have a rough idea of what our life will be, what our ministry will be, what the end result of any endeavor or project is, then we will not have any challenges enduring whatever the enemy brings our way before we get to where we need to be. Let's ask Jesus that God, I ask that I see the way you see. That I see the way you see. I see the way you see. He said, what I see my father do, that I do. What I see my father do, that I do. There's no way you can engage the eyes of Jesus to see. And you see the way he sees that you will miss it. That you will be left stranded. That you will lose your inheritance. It doesn't happen. Because the eyes of Jesus is the eyes of faith. The eyes of Jesus is the eyes of possibility. The eyes of Jesus is the life of can do. Thank you, Father Lord. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's say, Father, Father in, the in the name of Jesus, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. The way you think. In the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray. Lord, I pray that from today, as you think is the way I think. As you perceive is the way I perceive. As you meditate is the way I meditate. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, by myself, I can do nothing. But with you, I can do all things. I pray for grace. I pray for grace to think the way you think. I pray for grace to understand the way you understand. I pray for grace to see the way you see. 
receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's say, Father, in the name of Jesus, against every impossibility, against every impossibility, let me ask. The way you will act. Let me act. The way you will act. In the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and pray. Against every impossibility. When the storms of life come. When the challenges of life come. When I'm cornered by any situation. Let me act the way you will act. Let me act the way you will act. By myself I can do nothing. But with you I can do all things. Let me act the way you act. In the name of Jesus. The anointing to see the way you see. To feel the way you feel. To understand the way you understand. And it come upon me today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let's say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let me hear the way you hear. Let me speak the way you speak. Let me hear the way you hear. In the name of Jesus. And open your mouth and pray. Oh God. Father, words of my mouth. The words of my mouth let it be seasoned with salt. Let me see the way you see. The apostles saw the impossibility. They don't know how to feed 5,000 people. They were overwhelmed with their bills. They were overwhelmed with their situation. But God, you saw differently. You saw differently. He said, bring me the five loaves of bread. And the rest is history. Holy Spirit, by your grace, let us speak the way you speak. Let us see the way you see. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Can you lift up your hands to heaven? And let your amen be like thunder. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we go out this week. Amen. Mighty God. Yes. Go ahead of us. Amen. Wherever we go. Wherever we turn. Whatever we plan, I ask that you show up. Back us up. Go ahead of us. Back us up. Go ahead of us. Back us up. In whatever we do this week, wherever we find ourselves, we will not be stranded. The grace of God will speak for us. The authority of God will work for us. Amen. The power of the cross will avail us. Amen. I speak to the north. Amen. I speak to the south. Amen. I speak to the west. Amen. I speak to the east. Amen. Because Genesis chapter 13. Yes. Bible says, Abraham, come out of your tent. Look at the north. Look at the south. The west and the east. All the land that you see, I have given them to you. Mighty God, this week, Whatever we plan, whatever we lay our hands on, whatever we conceive, whatever we say we want to do, we take possession of it. The violent must take it by force. Holy Spirit, that holy violence, that holy faith that we need to move forward, to soar, to expand and enlarge, to increase. Mighty God, we take delivery of it. We take delivery of it. The anointing that will take you and I to the very end of where God wants us to be. In the name that's above every other name, which is the name of the risen Christ, let it fall upon us. I pray for our children. This week, we will not lose any of them. They will not be sick. They will be the head only. And they will never be the tail. In the name of Jesus, I pray for business people. This week will be different. Whether you have a shop, or you are doing it online, or just a friendly one, or just a family one, or the one you carry in your bag, and you go around to people, God will market you. God will market you. God will market you. I pray for people who are employed. This week, a very big problem that is been worrying your boss, 
you will solve it for him. Amen. And when it's time for promotion, he will remember you. Amen. You will not die. Amen. You will leave. Amen. I will not die. Amen. I will leave. Amen. This is our month of his riches and glory. Amen. In this month of March, you will march forward. Amen. You will take territories. Amen. God will enlarge you. Amen. He will expand you. Amen. The word of God that is coming today and these prayers of faith that is coming will work for you. Amen. It will work for you. Fibroid, I speak against you. Amen. The Lord rebuke you. That is not letting the people of God stand for a long time. That is not letting them to move well. Every disability, every demobility. You are a stranger. You are a liar. I speak against you. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. Abnormal blood sugar. High blood pressure. Cells that are multiplying against the normal course of nature in the body of your people or their family or their friends or extended people. Today it is written, He was wounded for our transgression, He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon Him, and by His stripes. Bible says, ye who are healed. The word of God says, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he went about doing good, healing people of their diseases because God was with him. Today, I stand on Mount Gerizim where the blessings were pronounced. I stand on Mount Carmel where the fire consumed the offering of Elijah. I stand on Mount Zion we are the rules who are given to the people. Yes. I stand on Mount Holy. Yes. We are Jesus ascended unto heaven. Yes. And I decree every power of sickness in your body. I curse you. Yes. To the root, I curse you. Yes. He that don't have you gone. You will go no further. Yes. Bible says, I may war in the flesh. But the weapons of my warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through the Lord to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing them in captivity and obedience to the knowledge of Christ. As I stand as the one who has been redeemed, as I stand as the one who has been bought with a price, as I stand as a covenant child, and as I stand in my office that you call me into, as a pastor of this Christ, yes. in the name that's above every other name, Amen. I, Richard, will not bury you. Amen. You will not bury me. Amen. You will shine. Amen. You will shine. Amen. This week, your light will break out. Amen. Your light will break out. Amen. Of your rising. Amen. I pray for every home represented here, yes. intending couples represented here. Mighty God, the reason why God has brought you together, it will manifest. Amen. It will manifest. Amen. I pray for the youths. Lauri Kabashi Kaba. Your glory is your strength. Amen. And therefore, in the name that's above every other name, yes, you are our tomorrow. Your tomorrow will be all right. Amen. Your tomorrow will be all right. Amen. Your tomorrow will be all right. Amen. I pray for your parish. I pray for your work. I pray for your mandate. I pray for this commission. I didn't put myself here. You found me faithful in all my sins. You put me, God, out of the mighty clay and placed me among princes. This parish, I speak growth to you. Amen. I speak increase to you. Amen. Enlightenment to you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every spirit, yes. anti-growth spirit, yes. every 
every spirit yes. that may be working contrary yes. against the plan and purpose yes. of the Lord yes. for this church, yes. I break your power. Yes. I break your hold. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Amen. Swan, goodness and might shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall be the master of the Lord.